is my personal savior. So we know the answer. Who are the Starborn? Well, we are. We're some cracked mirror version of ourselves. The whole thing seems unreal. Doesn't it? I was hoping the Starborn were somehow so advanced that their concerns were... cosmic? Significant? Instead, they're fighting over goddamn toys like we've been doing since caveman times. It's just a stupid game to them. And all our deaths and suffering... not relevant. And they seem to be just as messed up as the rest of us. So the Unity... is... a gateway. A gateway to countless possibilities. And you have a chance to go through it. Imagine. I'd be lying if it doesn't sound like the adventure of a lifetime. I don't know if you're taking anyone with you. But if you take me, I got no idea if I'd go through or not. If it went for Korra, I'd jump on it in a heartbeat. Korra would probably shove both of us out of the way and dive in first. Born explorer, that girl. I can't say I blame you. I'm not sure everyone in Constellation wouldn't make that leap, though. I know it's your decision who to work with, but you gotta remember that the Hunter murdered our friend. Sure, the Emissary may be a version of Barrett, but he's not our Barrett. But that doesn't make what the Hunter did right, not by a long shot. If the Starborn are party crashers from different universes, I'd side with the one that's not willing to murder innocents to win. Excellent. Glad to hear it. My head is still spinning. Maybe after a few nights sleep it'll be clearer. Take care. Landing site locked. Take us in. If you are free soon, could we talk? It is a relief to know that the Terramorphs are being dealt with. But are you sure this Asilis creature is the right way to do it? Where Terramorphs are concerned, I do not believe there is a way to remove risk from the equation. Perhaps an experimental microbe has its own risks, but what of the risks to who knows how many human lives until the Asilis can do its job? I suppose we shall. Not that it matters, since the decision was made. I will say, though, that I am glad you convinced them to destroy the Lazarus plant. Terramorphs are enough of a worry on their own. The idea that they could appear anywhere, at any time. Ugh. Well, it is good to know that this particular threat is behind us. And you have done a service to all who live in the settled systems.
the occupants left in a hurry. Hopefully for no reason we need to be concerned about. holding Nova. We double-checked the leakage concerns this morning before the launch. All signs green. Any changes to the calculation sequence from Voltaire? No changes since we uploaded the last figures yesterday. It's a clean shot from here to Jupiter. One day the computer will be on board the spaceship. Just imagine that. One miracle of science at a time, Canaveral. Counting down in five, four, three, two, one. Some of the earliest space flights were likely coordinated from here. <laughs> Can strange that... to be standing on such a unique All clear, Nova. Indicators look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in... <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. <laughs> How does it feel to break the laws of physics, Canaveral? We're all pretty excited down here in NASA, I won't lie. Excited enough to tell me where you got the original data? Not in a million years, Nova. like this were once absolutely essential to ensuring our survival. And now here they are, buried and forgotten. Perhaps an elevator will allow us to access what lies beneath all this dust. Thanks. 
work would not have been done if the ship had not meant to launch. A shame. Judith Tatien. The recent delivery from Mars is unsettling. I was expecting rock samples or maybe fossils of microbial life. Instead, Dr. Victor Isa comes with two members of the military. Everything they have brought back is under wraps. What could a theoretical physicist need with a sample from Mars? Station log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I have been trying to cause you to Dr. Isa. Victor to see what is going on. His team has completely commandeered one of the labs with those two military hand refs, checking who comes in and out. I joked that maybe he found a little gray man who was doing an autopsy, and he grew very pale. Two days later, he sends me a request asking for more information on my background in material science, metallurgical engineering. Oh, we have a meeting tomorrow. I, I think I'm being invited into the lab. Station log. Dr. Judith Latin. I have never been so nervous since I defended my dissertation. Four hours talking to Victor and his team about theoretical metals, atomic bonding, even a half hour divergence into magnetism that I'm pretty sure was just to throw me off the trail of what we were actually talking about. Then I got to see the lab. I. I don't know how much I should say. The periodic table just got thrown out the window. That's not what I'm asking. We've added 
No success extracting even a sample of material from the object. No explanation for the gravitational effects. No motion graph to explain its harmonic frequencies. I can't even establish a melting point. Judith. But you had me building these prototype colliders for months. And now you want me to pump helium-3 into it based on this equation you've written on a goddamn napkin? I just need you to trust me. I have been trusting you. We keep slamming our heads against a brick wall, getting nothing. And you keep coming up with something new to try. Like, you know what's going to happen. Where are you getting your information, Victor? I'm sorry, Judith. I... Look, not here, okay? Somewhere off base. I'll tell you everything. But I'm not lying, okay? We're going to discover something important here. I promise. behind.
of this facility is massive. I wonder how many knew how big it really was. Project Log. Dr. Victor Isa. We turned on the prototype today. The gravitational field around it began to fold as we long suspected. Complete reversal of gravitational pull was observed on dozens of loose objects around the lab. I'm setting up a meeting with the directors to propose a larger test. The prototype proves we don't need the original anymore. But further work is going to have to take place in space. Somewhere with abundant helium-3 and with a civilian partner. Someone with access to large-scale manufacturing resources and computational equipment. Engineering gravitational folds pulling the far side of the solar system closer to us? It's all going to be possible. Project Log. Dr. Judith Tatien. I watched the Gravjet tests from the moon today. It was the first time we were able to talk to the team at Nova Galactic directly. So many things were under wraps before, but... Now everyone wants all the publicity they can get. I'm already seeing proposals for manufacturing androids of drives. Expeditions to Alpha Centauri and beyond. It's also... overwhelming. And... worrying. It could take years. Decades before we know what all these side effects of operating a grab drive can be. But... no one wants to hear that right now. Like a bunch of pioneers racing towards the edges of the frontier without knowing about the grizzly bears in the mountains. We must be nearing the artifact. If it is here, we should not give up now. ancient history now. Only thing we're doing these days is launching weather satellites. Guess this is as good a retirement as any. Now, Project Demeter, you want our help manufacturing scanners to better track these new meteorological patterns we've seen. Our guess is that the poles might be naturally shifting, causing some gravitational fluctuations that are throwing off our old models. Why do you need the scanning tolerances to be so small? What are you trying to find? I want to be sure. It's, it's not like we're doing much these days anyway. The glory days are over. Why not give ourselves a challenge before they write us off in the history books? Earth's atmosphere is going to start sputtering out into space. 
Can the drives be fixed? I'm working on some designs that should discreetly solve the problem. Under the guise of an emergency update to the fueling pumps. We're talking about the end of Earth, and you're trying to be subtle about it. Judith, the last thing we need is people losing faith in grab drive technology. That might be our only option. To what? Are you seriously saying we should abandon Earth? The timeline is under 50 years. A blink of an eye for a planet. But more than enough time for a human exodus. And what do we tell people? We say it's an act of God. One that science has found a solution for. Time for humanity to take its place in the stars. You know. Didn't you? You lied to me. I... All this time, I dedicated my life to this discovery, Victor. And you knew we were going to kill off our planet? You haven't seen the future I've seen. There's an infinite expanse of promise out there. A meteor could have hit Earth. A plague, another world war. Colonizing other galaxies secures humanity's future for all coming generations, across all time. At the expense of our home. Stop it, both of you. All that matters is building enough ships to get everyone off this planet. And we need to start now. I'll draft up a statement. We'll need to address the entire international community. I'm sorry, Judith. There isn't a planet in this universe that will be far enough away from you, Victor. We are never speaking again after this is over. My name is Dr. Victor Isa. And if you're listening to this, then you probably already know the truth. I was young when I first headed the retrieval team of an odd gravitational anomaly on Mars. But I kept what really happened that day hidden from everyone except one other person. Even she didn't believe me at first. But I have no reason to lie to anyone now, so I... I hope you'll accept this confession, whoever you are. When I touched the anomaly, I experienced 12 days of lost time. I met myself. He told me everything that has since come true. The grav drive equations, the tests on the moon, Earth's atmosphere sputtering away because of what we had done. But he also told me about a city thriving on a planet orbiting a distant star. Human culture, art, music, lifestyles evolving and shining brightly across all of space. What price would I be willing to pay for that future? Maybe you don't believe me. Maybe Judith was right and I'm just a coward who wants to believe his mistakes were justified. But everyone has forgotten about the real origins of the grav drive. This artifact from Mars. I hope you make better use of it than I did.
trying to take a little too much on. Literally.
understand now why I asked you to come here. The artifacts unlock the secret of interstellar travel. At the cost of Earth. An easy trade, honestly. Why have one world when you can have all the settled systems? Assuming we weren't going to lose it anyway. War, disease, famine, all the classics. Don't you see? The power of the artifacts forced humanity to the stars. They didn't get to make a choice. How many would have chosen Earth? And what gave Victor Isa the right to choose for them? You see the hypocrisy in what the Emissary is saying, right? They don't want to rob people of their free will, but then they steal the artifacts for themselves. In the wrong hands, the power of the artifacts can make anyone a tyrant. That's why we watch over them. The only thing you're watching out for is yourself. Don't be a fool. The Emissary and I may have our differences, but you do not want to give us a common enemy. For once, he's right. Don't do this. We can collect the final pieces together. Well, look at that. The Emissary just became my new best friend. You've made your choice. When you're ready, the Hunter and I will be at the Buried Temple. That's where we'll settle things. Meaning, we'll kill you. But hey, at least we'll wait. The final round doesn't start until there's only one artifact left to gather. And if I'm not mistaken, Constellation has one or two to go.
us see what wonders of life this planet hosts. Chief of Security. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the Director. Kaya Patel, our Administrator and Research Director. 28 years in quantum particle physics, or so I'm told. It's beyond me. We're a small research station in the middle of nowhere. Pirates eat places like these for lunch. It is my job to make sure that we are not on the menu. We'll take the back way up. storage area. Don't touch anything. So, uh, What the? Easy! 
Easy, easy! What the hell was that? What are you talking about? One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. In our storage room. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? Look, I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Come on, this way. Who's there? Oh, oh, thank God. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? Rafael. Rafael Aguero. Chief engineer here. Well, I was. What do you mean? Wait. How did you get in here? What? What are you talking about? No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. Unless... The accident... Maybe... Maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... Right. Sorry. Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic odd... Disappear! We should... Wait, he's back. All right, we're on our way up. He was out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor, end of the floor. You can't miss it. Way. Director. Thank you, Ethan. Come in. Kaya Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director, you can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this.
An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? No, we don't. Enlighten us. Really? That's all you're gonna say? No, no. Fair enough. You have a prior connection with them, then. Maybe that's why this is only affecting you. We didn't know. That's why we were researching it. That is science, after all. That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Burned out? The leak? Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. Presumed dead. The research level has been locked down since the accident. We still don't know exactly what happened. If he survived, he could have ended the lockdown, but... You mean this other Raphael? No. How could we possibly do that? Raphael was a colleague and a friend. If there was some way to help him, I would. But it does seem unlikely. We're not sure. Raphael was in the lab near the ventilation controls. He could have stopped it. Maybe he did. Or died trying. This facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion. This artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions and somehow it's still running. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. What you see here are just our living quarters. Most of this facility is deep underground. We have a particle accelerator and extensive research and development labs. Or we did. Not from up here. The explosion fried the network circuits. Without physical access to the research level, there is little we can do. We have been working in makeshift labs for months. How? I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab. So clearly, his elevator works. Take it. And you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. We can't shut down the probe, but we might be able to adjust some of the other parameters. It's risky. We don't know what we're dealing with, but... <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Come with me. The control unit is in the fabrication lab next door. What have we gotten ourselves into?
Oh, oh, it's you. What happened? You disappeared, and the ceiling caved in, and, and... I thought I'd finally lost it. I'll manage. Look, can we just go? What? How? Look, if you think things are bad up here, the research level is even worse. I barely made it out, and that was months ago. I don't understand any of this. If I hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. I... Okay, okay. You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess. Whatever's happening to you, it's a reasonable theory, I guess. They're a native species. We had an electric pulse field to keep them out. The fire took out the generators, damaged the foundation. They just keep coming. this out, assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. I was in the lab, working on the frequency calibration for the probe. I was walking out of the control room when it happened. I heard the tanks rupture, the alarm sound. I only had a second to react. I jumped back into the control room. The doors sealed. I was safe from the gas, the fire, everything. But I was trapped. There was nothing I could do to stop it. If I had gone the other way, maybe I could have made it to the ventilation controls, killed the system, even if it killed me. I don't know. I don't want to think about it. What? I... Oh, it's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah, let me get the doors for you. And done. Uh, is there anything else you need? Uh, yes. Kataxi. Nasty things. The original survey team ran across them. You're welcome to read the old logs if you want. Yeah, I'll unlock the terminal for you. Bigger than you'd expect. We've got a particle accelerator, whole lab complex, the high energy research lab. Real state of the art. Can't tell you what a tenth of it actually does. That's right. Has been since the accident. We can't connect to the control system to override it. The whole system's on a hair trigger. Cameras spot anyone not in the staff database. They fire off an alarm and all hell breaks loose.
Did you get lost in the hallway? Ugh. All right. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 terabolts. Calibrating to 95, 97, 100. Ugh, nothing. Let's try the other way. 91, 89. What the? Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach. Distortion, please. Nothing. No, hold on. There's a slight pattern change. Some kind of resonance. All right, stay there. Let me turn the feed back up for a moment. Calibrating to 90. setting causes the distortions to manifest, and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift, and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. Right. If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the high energy research lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. Well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. Exactly. And when you shut down the experiment, the probability function will collapse. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in, at that moment, is what will become real. For you, and your universe at least. The question is, which will you choose? Hmm. If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. Thirty people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe, you don't have to decide now. But when the time comes, please, keep them in mind. Now, it's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. 
It's been a fascinating day. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. My journal? Have you been in my quarters? Who do you think you are? The director may have given you run of this station, but I... Wait. Wait. What is this? This entry. It's mine, but... I didn't write this. The scorch marks. God. Yes. Thank you. I can spare a few more supplies. And I'll give you a break on anything else you need. Hello. Don't touch anything. 